All right then, gang, so now I'd like to talk about arrays. So what are they exactly? Well, basically, arrays give us a way to store multiple different values inside just a single variable. So you know how previously we've created a variable, give it a name, like name, and set it equal to a value, which could be a string. Now, this value is being stored inside this variable, right? Now, an array gives us a way to create multiple different values and store them all inside a single variable. Now, in PHP, there's three types of arrays. We have indexed arrays, associative arrays, and also multi-dimensional arrays. So I'm going to cover the first two types of array, indexed and associative, in this video right here. Then in the next video, we'll talk about multi-dimensional. So then, indexed arrays, first of all, these are the easiest to create and probably almost the most common as well. So they're very simple to set up. All we do is create a variable. I'm going to call this people1 and set it equal to an array by using square brackets. This indicates an array in PHP. So now all we have to do is place our values inside these square brackets. So if we're doing an array of strings, we could just do our first string first of all. I'm going to say Sean is the first person. Then we comma separate the values. The second string could be Crystal, comma again. And the third string is going to be Ryu. Okay, so now we have an array here which is storing three different strings all inside this one variable. Now, say at some point we wanted to access one of these different values inside this array. How do we do that? Well, we do that using the index, and that's why these are called indexed arrays. So, you know, like when we talked about strings, if we stored a string like name, like so, and then we wanted to find, say, this letter, we'd say name and then square brackets one because the first one remember is zero position then this is one so that would find us the h now we do a similar thing inside arrays so instead of this being a string this is just now an array and this is position zero this is position one this is two and so forth okay so if we want to access something from this array we can just use square brackets to access the index of that element so, for example, we'd say people one and then one, and that would get us this because this is position zero, one, two. OK, so that's why these are called indexed arrays, because we use the index right here to access them. They all have a specific index associated with them. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, etc. So let's just echo this to the browser and see if this works. Save that and come over here. I'm going to refresh and we see crystal. OK, so that works. OK, so what I'm going to do is actually create now another indexed array called people2. So people2 is going to be equal to square brackets again. And in fact, I'll show you a different way to create an array because sometimes you might see this. This is one way to create an indexed array, and that's probably the way I use most often. Another way to create an array is by saying array and then in brackets, because this is a function, this is going to create an array for us. We've seen functions briefly. So then inside, we place our different values. So I could have an array with Ken, and then a comma again, and then the second person will be Chun hyphen Lee. So this here, this is an alternative way to create an array. We use the array keyword, the function, and then we place our values inside exactly the same way. Again, I probably use this way more often than not, but you will sometimes see me use this way as well because I tend to interchange them. OK, so let's try this one. We'll say echo and we want people two, and we'll get position. I don't know one again, which is this thing right here because zero one. OK, so let's save that and preview in a browser and this time we see Chun-Li. Okay, so this works as well. So that's two different ways now that we've seen to create an indexed array. Now it's not just limited to adding strings in array, we can also add other data types as well, for example numbers. So I could create another variable down here called ages and set that equal to an array, this time using square brackets and I'll say 20, 30, 40, 50. And now we have an array of numbers. Now I want to show you a different way to print out the values of these arrays because so far we've just been echoing out these single elements inside the array. What if we wanted to echo the whole array? Well, let me just try this, echo ages. Save this and preview over here 
and notice array to string conversion on line 12 array. So it's basically not letting us do this because this right here should be a string. Whenever we echo something out, it expects an easy conversion to a string, okay? That it can output to the browser. So a better way to see these is to use a function called print underscore R. And that means print readable. So if I save this now, it's gonna print a readable version of this array onto the page over here. So if I refresh, now we can see we have an array. Position zero is 20, one is 30, two is 40, three is 50. So this is good if you want to see what's in an array while you're developing, you can use this print R function right here and pass in the array that you want to print to the screen in a readable format, okay? Cool. So we have these different arrays now. What if we want to maybe change one of the elements inside one of these arrays? Well, to do that, we use square bracket notation again. So say, for example, I wanted to override this age right here with 25. Well, this is zero, one position, right? One. So we say ages and then one, and then we set that equal to a new value. So I could say ages one is now equal to 25. And now if we print R and then pass in ages, this is gonna update and show us that 25 is gonna be in position one this time. So save that, refresh, and now we can see 25 is in position one. Okay, so that's how we overwrite a particular um, value inside the array. But what if we want to add a new value to the array? Well, all we need to do, I'm gonna comment this out, is say ages, and then square brackets, don't put anything in there, and then we could say 60 or something like that. And now what's gonna happen is it's gonna say, okay, well, you've not passed in an index into this array that you want to overwrite. So what I'm gonna do is just add a new element onto the end, which is gonna be 60 now. So again, if we just print this to the browser, we should see that. So save, refresh, and now we see 60 on the end. Cool. All right then. Now there's another way to add values onto the end of an array, and I'm gonna show you that now. I'm gonna comment this out, and then I'm gonna say array underscore push, which is a function, and this function takes in two parameters. First of all, the array that we want to push a value onto, and that is gonna be ages. Then the second value is gonna be the value that we want to push onto the array. So I'm just gonna say 70. So I'm saying here, look, I want to use this array push method to add on a new element or a new value to the array at the end. And this is the array I want to add something to, and this is the value I want to add. So if I save this, refresh over here, then we don't see anything because we've not printed it out. So let's make sure we do that. Save it and refresh. Now we see this value added onto the end as well. So that's two different ways we can add extra values onto an array. Now I wanna show you one more thing when it comes to indexed arrays, and that is gonna be how to count the different elements inside it. So say I want to know the length of this thing right here or the length of this thing. Then we use a method called count to do that. So I'm gonna echo the result of this to the browser. So echo count, and then we're gonna pass in the age or the ages array. And this should be now one, two, three, four, five, six, because we added these two on, okay? So we should see six in the browser. Refresh and we see six, cool. So that's how we count arrays and add new items onto the arrays, override them and create them. And this is all one type of array, indexed arrays, meaning we use the index of the element to access them or override them, etc. okay? So, that's the first type of array I wanted to show you. And in fact, I'm gonna show you one more thing. I'm gonna show you how to merge two arrays together. So say for example, we have this array right here, we have this array as well. They're both people and we want to merge them together. So we take these values and we place them onto here into one gigantic array. Well, we can use a PHP method to do that as well or a PHP function rather to do that. First of all, I'll create a third variable called people3 and that is gonna store the result of this function. And the function name is array underscore merge. Then this takes two arguments. The first argument is gonna be the first array we want to merge, which is people1, and the second argument is the second array we want to merge with it, which is people2. So now if we print r 
and people three, we should see that merged array. So save that view in a browser. And now we can see the merged array right there with every name in it. Cool. Okay then, so that's indexed arrays. Now I'd like to move on to associative arrays. And these are slightly different, but not overly different. So associative arrays are key value pairs. So whereas in an indexed array, we use the index like this to access the different elements inside the array, this time when we're creating associative arrays, we'd use keys instead of indexes, okay? And we'd specify those keys when we create the arrays. So for example, let me just put in brackets here, key and value pairs, so we remember what these are. And let's create our first associative array. So I'm gonna create a variable called ninjas1 and set that equal to an array right here. Now, the way we do this is by first of all, creating our key, which is normally a string. And this key is gonna be the name of the ninja, right? And then we do equals and carrot, which is like an arrow. And this points to the value of whatever this key is gonna be. This will all make more sense when we come to work with it in a second. But for example, I'm gonna say black. So I'm doing the ninja name and the belt color. So Sean is a black belt, right? So this is the key and this is the value. Now, if we were looking at indexed, the value is this and the key is this. So instead of the one, I'm using now the string Sean. And if we want to access this later on, we're gonna use this key to access the value. I hope that makes sense. So that is the first key value pair. So we do a comma after that. The second key value pair is gonna be Mario and then an arrow and then the value which is going to be orange and sometimes by the way you might see spaces here it really doesn't matter uh, as long as the arrow is between the key and the value so comma and the third one i'm going to do is luigi that's the third key and then an arrow and the value is going to be brown okay so that is our first now associative array Okay then, so say now I want to print out this value or echo out this value to the browser. So the way I'd access this value is by saying, first of all, echo, then the variable, which is ninjas1. Then in square brackets, we use the key, which is Mario, okay? So inside a string, we can't just say Mario like this. It has to be inside the string, inside quotations, Mario, okay? So that will get us this value, which is associated to that key. So let's save that. We should see orange on the screen and we do. Cool. Okay then. So again, if we wanted to print a readable version of this whole array to the browser, then we can just say print underscore R and then ninjas one like so. Save that and preview in a browser and we see the whole thing. So now we can see the key here and the value the key, the value, etc. So these were before zero value, one value, two value. This time we have keys instead of numbers. Okay, cool. So let me make a second associative array. I'm going to call this ninjas2 and set this equal to this time the other way of creating arrays, which is the array function. And we do it exactly the same way inside. So the key first of all, then the arrow, and then the value. So Bowser is going to be green, a green belt. And then we'll do peach. And peach is going to be yellow. Okay. So that's our second associative array. Now, if we want to print this, we can do it exactly the same way. Print R and we'll pass in ninjas2 like so. Save it and preview in a browser. And now we can see this one as well. So we have Bowser, which is green and peach, which is yellow. Okay, cool. So let's comment those out for now and down here. And if we wanted to add a new value to one of these things, then we can do that by just adding in the new key. For example, I could say ninjas2. I want to add to this array right here, square brackets. I'm going to make up a key name. I'm going to say toad and I'm going to set that equal to pink. So what that is going to do is add on here, essentially toad pink okay so we're adding on that new field that new value so let's get rid of that and let's print this out now so print underscore r and ninjas 2 save it and a refresh over here 
and now we can see toad is inside the array likewise if we wanted to override something we could say peach the value of the key yeah and we're overriding that with pink so now this will be pink instead of yellow so save that preview again and this time we see that peach is pink etc okay cool so we can also count the amount of elements or values inside associative arrays by using the count function that we also used before. So we pass in the array we want to count the elements inside of. So we'll say ninjas one, and that should be three, right? Because we have one, two, three elements inside there. Even though there's six strings, each one of these is just one element. So let's save that, preview, and we see three, cool. Okay, so we can also merge these associative arrays, much like we did this thing up here. I'm going to just copy that, and I'm going to paste it down here. And this time I'm going to say ninjas3 is equal to array merge. That's the function name, and it's going to be equal to ninjas1 merged with ninjas2. So let's replace those. And finally, let's print this to the screen using printr and ninjas three because that's the name of this variable and that should be the merged arrays together here so let's preview that and now we can see we have this big array sean mario luigi bowser and peach okay so there we go my friends that is basically in a nutshell indexed arrays and associative arrays we will be using these quite frequently as we go forward and when we make our project later on so don't worry if you don't understand it 100 just yet we'll be repeating this many times but in the next video i want to talk about the third type of array in php which is a multi-dimensional array